So we're going to talk about Zavix. What is Zavix? So Zavix, this is their words here, is the ultimate enterprise level software for designed real time monitoring of millions of metrics collected from tens of thousands of servers, virtual machines and network devices. Zavix is open source and is downloadable for free. So it's pretty cool. And what got me interested in Zavix is I was trying to do some decisions on how we wanted to monitor our Linux infrastructure. Now, some of you may know, if you've been in my channel before, we talk about being an MSP and we manage a lot of Windows servers for our clients and some Linux ones. And mostly we're using SolarWinds for a lot of that. I wanted Zavix specifically for monitoring a lot of our Linux infrastructure that runs the company and everything we run is not Windows at all. It's all Linux or BSD based. And this was a cool video, which I'll leave a link to. It was the production stats for managing 7,000 hosts, 1.5 million items and 450,000 triggers with Zabbix. And this is a cool talk and I'll leave a link here. It kind of shows the scalability of how big Zabbix can get. And of course, this talk was uh, two years ago, 2016. And, you know, I imagine they're monitoring even more with it. And someone's going to throw out there, but what about Nagios? So I've already invested a lot of time into Zabbix and I'll leave you this comparison because I thought it was fair. It was interesting. It does back and forth about the two choices here. And I'm not saying that Nagios or Zabbix, one of them is substantially better than the other, but I just really thought Zabbix was a little bit easier to set up when I started playing with each of them. I kind of got it, got it figured out, I thought fairly quickly, um, which is still a lot of time put into it. And it, it's one of those uh, arguments because they're both competing products. You have, I don't have time to spend all my time learning one and then spend a whole lot of time learning another to do an in-depth comparison of them. Uh, but I liked the way the Zavix agents work. They were fairly intuitive, I thought, when I set them up. I said, okay, this makes sense. This is easy. So Zavix is the one I went with. I don't, there's a few other videos out there you can probably find uh, that go more in depth with Nagios. And I'll leave you links to both the video and this comparison because they talk about some of those details uh, from a functional standpoint. But for the most part, yes, you can accomplish a lot of the same things with both of these. I really also like the fact that Zabbix was pre-compiled into a lot of the operating systems repositories, uh, different Linux distros, and in Nagios, it seemed less clear that you had to get third party or uh, one of my friends who does use Nagios just compiles it all himself. And I'm like, okay, I didn't really want to have to go through another step of compiling some of the things just to get things working. Uh, so that's why Zabbix won out for me. So let's give a high level of how Zabbix functions. And it's kind of neat. We're running it here locally, but you can have it contacting devices that are not local. You can set up proxies. Uh, it does work with PSSense. PSSense has native plugin built in for Zabbix uh, version four, which is the latest uh, stable release of Zabbix. That's built right into PSSense. Um, it can monitor all these different devices. Now this is Kind of the selling point of any of these is a single pane of glass to visualize all of your things. Uh, it does have graphs, network maps. It's got a slideshow option, so you can turn your network as a slideshow, which I thought was kind of cool. Easy to get through drill down reports. Uh, be notified. I haven't turned on notifications yet, so I've only spent a few weeks tuning this, and I'm waiting until I make sure I have all the tuning right before I blow myself up with notifications, because that can be a real issue when you have a whole lot of notifications uh, hitting your system. Protect all your data on all levels. So this is an interesting way how Zavix works. And this is a neat feature as well. So here's the Zavix server and here's your users on it and different authentication options if you want to use third party or you can use the Zavix authentication. So Zavix can talk to its agents directly or let's say this site has a lot of agents over here. You can have a proxy. And this is also neat. PSSense has Zavix and Zavix proxy built in. So let's say you have 20 agents loaded and each agent loads on one of the uh, computers or operating systems or container or wherever you have your Zavix agent running in to monitor it. It loads all that information in there and then passes it off to the proxy. And then you only have a connection from the proxy to Zavix. So instead of having a bunch of devices contacting your Zabbix server, they can bring through a proxy and then only talk to the proxy. So if you're managing at multiple site levels, this becomes an easy way to do it with the Zabbix proxy system. So they've got that kind of all thought out. Now this is where it's a little bit of interesting and I thought this was really cool about the way it works. Everything is built on a series of templates and those templates are easy to apply 
across all of your servers. So if you have a common groups of servers, common group of web servers, anything you adjust on those templates, you can then adjust and apply to all of them. There's also a giant store per se, a share.zabbix.com where tons and tons of more templates are. And I thought this was kind of a nice thing about them. There's all these people sharing templates and it's things like for monitoring Nextcloud, template for monitoring a FortiGate, uh, Sonic Walls, and just a ton of other things in here, which is cool, even a TeamSpeak monitor. Here's a new Windows uh, Server template. Now there's a bunch of them that are absolutely built in and it's easy to add more of these open source. So if you want something specifically in a monitor, fail to ban and some of the features and grab it, well, you just add this in here. You can then add it to your uh, config file and now it has more data in there. And we'll get into a couple of these details. I'll show you kind of how it works. Now, automating large dynamic environments is where this kind of specializes. Like I mentioned that video of monitoring over 7,000 uh, servers with this, it's extensible and it allows logging of everything. So it's not just logging your servers, it can log actions taken by technicians to fix a server. Uh, so when we get into some of the problems in the dashboard, you can see not only can we be alerted of a problem, we can see what technician addressed it or how it was addressed and it all becomes part of the log. So it's kind of like creating tickets on the fly and then closing those tickets and then having a tracking history of what was done to solve problems. So it's pretty cool. And because of the way the agents and the API works, it's really easy to get this set up everywhere. So uh, I did it from packages. So I chose here, 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 I'm running it on 4.0 version on Debian, version nine, MySQL database. The instructions are very clear. Zabbix is a little bit extensive to set up, but they have wonderful documentations, quick start guides and things like that. But there's a lot of reading. There's a lot of RTFM here. So that's definitely something you're going to uh, have to spend a little bit of time doing. If you just want to uh, get right to playing with it, you can grab the Zabbix appliance. They have a VirtualBox install, a Hyper-V install, a KVM Parallel, QMU, an ISO you can download, an Azure instance, an OVF format. There's easy ways, even uh, QCOW2 format. And right here is December of 2018. This is a November uh, 26, 2018 spin of it. So it's not that old of, it's not like you're playing with something really dated. But I thought that was good, cool. And of course you can compile it yourself uh, if you just wanted to do all the source code from raw or the agents, pre-compiled agents. And I think it's kind of neat they have all these backwards all the way back to version one. Uh, if you, for some reason, needed an older agent, agents are small and lightweight. And we'll, I'll show real quick a config file how to set them up. They're pretty straightforward, uh, easy to read config files. Even in Windows, uh, it still uses, there's no web interface or GUI interface for the agents that I'm aware of or that I found. It's all just done through a simple config file, even on Windows. Uh, but it was pretty easy. I did test it. It does work in Windows. I just... I did it as a test, not as anything in production. Uh, but you can download the agent. And in the case of FreeNAS, I downloaded the FreeBSD agent and loaded it on my FreeNAS servers. Now, Zavix has a couple of different ways to monitor. It can get things through SNMP um, or the agent. The agent gives you just better and more information. So I wanted to run the agent there and I'd knock on wood, have had no problems running it on my FreeNAS. And we'll cover that a little bit here. Let's jump in and look at how it looks from the dashboard. So we go over here, we'll kick off the dashboard. Now, the dashboards are extensive, uh, <laughs> and you could spend a lot of time customizing how you want your dashboard to look. It's a lot of flexibility and a lot of drill down you can do. So let's jump over here and look at the last five minutes or 15 minutes of data, and it's dynamic. It's not just pulling this for one particular aspect. It's pulling it for everything that I have loaded on this page. I can say, show me things in the last 12 hours, and we can then go here and we're looking at a couple different things. So out of the PF sense, I'm pulling the WAN, LAN, LAN2. We actually have a few more networks. I just didn't add them on here. You can customize these and, you know, put that all together. Then we have like the CPU load. I've done this where I've got it for all my servers. And this allows me to have on all of my servers, I can just kind of look over them and say which ones are peaking. And even though you see it spiking here, it's scaled, so 0.56 uh, on the load scale, very low load. We see this one's loaded a little bit more, but obviously it's nothing to be concerned about, but you can set thresholds for all of that. And then if I wanted to click on any of these servers and see how that server's doing, I can go here, and we're gonna jump to host screens on this particular server. I know some of this is kind of small print, but this is, like I said, an overview, not a drill down. Um, I can look at the localization and please note that this menu that says last 12 hours 
three hours, last 15 minutes. All this scale, like I said, nice, common, easy interface, uh, no matter which computer I jumped into or which server I jumped into to take a look at. Let's back over to the dashboard. What about problems with the servers? Same thing if I can go, okay, let's see if there was a problem with the server. So go over here to latest, uh, whoops, problems. History apply. All right. This is our forum server because we can monitor external servers on here. And I did not acknowledge these because I was rebooting this forum server when I was setting it up the other day. So I can go here, click on the acknowledged. I rebooted the server. This has been acknowledged, update. Now there's a little history of it. So you can go through problems, see how they're resolved, and it can notify you of all these problems as they occur. And we can see when they occurred, so you can start to build history. You can do all kinds of, you know, if there was a lot of problems, you may want to do some type of filtering and see which trigger did this. So it gives you a lot of data to work with here. So it's definitely pretty slick. And for those of you wondering if you can get even better graphs and these kind of basic looking older style graphs, yes, you can. Uh, it supports uh, Grafana as a plugin. I have not set it up because I don't, I, maybe I will eventually. I mostly care about data problem resolution and understanding the status of all the servers. Now here's the PF Sense program, a PF Sense server. We go here to graphs for this one, or actually we go to host screens, and I can dig into and see it, what's the PF Sense been doing, what's the load over time on it, uh, which is very little. We hardly have any utilization because uh, we kind of overbuilt our PF Sense box, but it's it's nice because you can grab all this data, especially if you're trying to track some bandwidth over time. You can look at memory usage and bandwidth usage and uh, system performance issues maybe going on with some of the servers. And this is where this software really shines. You can set all these thresholds and say, let me know if the server becomes overloaded, has too many processes, et cetera, et cetera. You can also just track problem history of things, and it can be done by groups of hosts. So I have my lab servers, LTS servers, select, remove this, apply, and we can have a history of every problem ever seen with any server. It also can notify me of things, uh, triggers are like, hey, someone changed a password. Well, if that was unexpected, I set that to be a highly severe notice because we pretty much on the servers never really have to change passwords because we're managing everything with SSH keys. But if there was some type of user change on any any server, it notifies me immediately with the highest level of alert. I have that set on here. Uh, it's nice monitoring that you can get with these. So you can really be notified when something happens, especially that would be like under the security risk idea. Unexpected password change in the server, definitely raise a red flag. Now, all these are editable, like this dashboard. We're going to edit this dashboard here, and we can just add widgets, action logs, map, problem, problem hosts, a trigger event overviews. You can drill down on this. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And for any one piece of Zabbix, I will tell you, I could probably go on for an hour of how to configure and all the details in it. I may do a few more uh, videos that dive more in depth on there. But like I've got PFSense WAN, PFSense LAN, LAN 2, and if we wanted to add another widget or edit one of these widgets. So this currently is called LAN2. You go here. I clicked it. It's a graph. I named it LAN2. You choose which server, but I can select really any server in my list, LTS servers. And then I could pull it and say this screen from this server with this data. And I could then keep updating and building the graph like that. And you can create different accesses for like inbound, outbound network traffic, et cetera, et cetera, or CPU time or whichever you wanted this graph to track. I'm choosing each one. So this is uh, incoming network traffic on IGB-1, um, but you can hit select and you can pull all the different options and graph them however you want. And this is what I said about Zabbix. It is extensive and you can spend a lot of time uh, tweaking and it's kind of fun to play with, but yeah, it's definitely... It, it, it takes a lot to set up. Even to get this far, um, partly just deciding how you want to lay things out can be um, a lot of th thought and planning. And the nice thing is you can create a ton of different dashboards. So I have the LTF Office dashboard, a global dashboard, a Zabbix server health, and I've slowly started creating a few other ones. And that's for the main dashboards. For the pieces and components that build a dashboard, then you have all these screens that go into it. So this is my Tom screen. And I have one uh, I built for one server when I was trying to track some problems with it. And this is where you can do some correlation information. Like I can overlay the problems times versus the times of high CPU load, et cetera, et cetera. So you can build a custom screen and you can even if the server, if you have multiple servers that are dependent on each other, you build that screen for those servers. So maybe one server your, runs your database, another one runs a web server, another one runs a load balancer, and you could then 
block all those together inside of one to see when the spike hit uh, for maybe a problem you're tracking. So it's really extensive. And then to build the screens, we have the maps. So these all kind of flow in each other. And this is all in the documentation. I made a map of my local network and that's where I add these. So this is like an element that got added to the dashboard for the local network. And once again, it's all editable uh, where you can just go here, which server do you want this to be, host name, host connection. There's a lot of variables in here. And once again, you can uh, label them based on these variables, or I could type a name in. Doing it based on variables is kind of cool because in whatever hosts you choose, it just fills in the names for you. And you can choose the way the servers look. Uh, we wanted to make it a different symbol. They've got all these different options, like a UPS, a terminal, all these different options in here so you can change the way it looks. And for example, I have the PF Sense to looks like an old uh, router, and then these are actual servers, so I have them with the big server icon. But this is, once again, back to being customizable. You can set the grid and everything else. That is, a, so far, something I really like about Zabbix is the high level of customization, but it's also that it's like you just can spend forever doing all of this data and trying to sort it out. Now, a couple other things you can do is dump things into RAW. So you can take any particular server and uh, go here, choose my LTS server group. We'll grab the forum server. And I can say just dump raw data here for anything that it's doing, and then start selecting that data to graph it, to start drilling it down. And then from there, you can start building again. So it's your data, however you want it, however you want to present it. And when you, whatever pivot angle you want to look at your data, Zabbix has an option for it. And you can spend a lot of time, maybe even overthinking it all. Uh, which is nice though that I can just, once I got this far as the dashboard, I'm happy because it gives me all my servers I want to monitor at a glance. Now let's go over here to configuration. Now I'm not really using the inventory part, so I'm not going to spend much time at all. I'll mention it. Um, you can actually build an inventory, what RAM, hard drive, et cetera, is in each server. Even if they're virtual, you can build out some of the information um, and do inventory management with it. Not really management, but more like understanding your inventory and what those servers are. It's definitely kind of neat, but uh, not something I really am using at the moment. The hosts are where you set up the hosts. And then we have like the host group. So we have the lab server and Linux servers, and we have the templates. Now the templates, like I said at the beginning here, are extensive. There's so many templates, not to mention these are the pages of ones it comes with. Then on top of that, you can add more, you can customize any of these templates. Um, it also tells you right here which these templates are linked to. So this is an, H an app server running HTTP and HTTPS. So I linked them to each of my servers, like my forums and my Invoice Ninja and my Screen Connect that all have uh, web servers running on it. It monitors all those and lets me know if there's any problems on there. There's a Zabbix application server template. So yes, Zabbix monitors itself with its own agent. Uh, so it can tell you things going on there. And like I said, you, these are very customizable as well. I'm glad they have templates. So at least you can start with the template and kind of go back and forth from there and figure out how much monitoring you really need or whether or not the data it pulls is relevant. Now, when Zabbix does its connections, so some of these servers are local, some of these are remote. Matter of fact, like the forum server is running in DigitalOcean. So yes, I know you can see the IP address and it doesn't really matter because when you go to forums.lawrencesystems.com, you can find the IP address. That's not a big deal. What is important is Zabbix out of the box does not communicate via uh, encryption. It has the ability to, but if you're just setting up a Zabbix agent on your local network and you trust that LAN, you can skip the... Uh, authentication part and you can just tell it to communicate pretty simple but I do prefer encryption even on the local network now as far as the way the network settings have to go um, I'm gonna I have a demo server set up here at 192.168.3.179 and we're gonna break this server down and show you just how it works so here's that server at 179 we're gonna SSH into it and it's running the Zabbix agent so if we go over here htop somewhere in here and yeah, let's do it There it is. Here's what the Zabbix agent looks like running. It's pretty small, has a couple waiting for connections. So it, as it sends data back and forth, it lets you know which uh, agent conf it's using right there. There's a config file, which we'll go over in a second. When you add a server in here, you go ahead and add the host name. I called this one Debian Demo. I added it to the group lab servers. And this is where if you've customized your dashboard, you can say throw everything that's production servers onto the dashboard. So when you tag another host that you add 
in there, it automatically can be added to all those dashboards related to those or whatever monitoring templates you set up. So this is where a little bit of getting started with Zabbix, and maybe I'll make a specific getting started with Zabbix. Once you have some of those base things configured, as you add servers, it can dynamically populate things on the other side. Now, the connection part, the 10.10050 is the default port, easy to modify and change to a different port. So here's the IP address of Zabbix. Here's the port it's using. But the way it connects is like this. I cannot ping the Zabbix server. 2.2. So if you looked up here at the top, 2.2 .2 is my Zabbix server. I'm trying to ping it. Specifically, they're on two separate networks, and my .2 network is protected from other networks unless you are on a specific access list. There's a lot of rules. So this server has no way to contact it, but the Zabbix server can talk to it. So the Zabbix from the 2.2 .2 can see the 3.179 server. So this allows it to accept connections. And then we go into the Zabbix config file, and we'll cover that real quick here. Uh, whoops, zabbixagent.config. We'll grow up to the top here. Actually, this will do a search. And right here, server equals 192.168.2.2. Now you can set more than one Zabbix server to talk to this. You can actually have more than one, I believe, coming in. But I said this is the allow. So server 192.168.2.2 is allowed to talk to this particular server. And this is just kind of a safety thing. And the listen port is left default here at 1050. I'm sorry, 10050. So this allows it to accept connections there. So if another server tries to talk to it, it just drops the connection. The second part I mentioned was the encryption. And it's pretty simple. I'm using the GNU TLS, but it does support a couple different options for encryption. It does PSK and it does certification certs. So you can do it as a cert. Now I'm not... I followed a little bit in how to do it. You can build a cert for your specific Zabbix server and you can load that trust into the other Zabbix servers. It, it, probably at scale, probably the better way to do it uh, for doing these couple servers. I just generated a, a pre-shared key for each one and their documentation how to do it's pretty straightforward and you just name it database.psk and away you go. Now, how does that actually work? Well, you go over here to encryption and this is kind of neat too because you're allowed to do no encryption, PSK or certificate or all of them. It lets you select multiple. So you can actually have multiple ways uh, that these Zabbix servers are able to talk to each other. So I actually turn off the no encryption because I don't want anything floating across the internet in plain text. Even though it's not sending any passwords that I know of, it's really just sending changes in data and rate information um, from the Zabbix agent to the Zabbix server. I prefer all that to be passed over encryption. So when you see here, this is the PSK and no, don't, I generated it for this YouTube demo. It'll be deleted before it's over, but and this is on private network, so it doesn't really matter um, unless you're inside my network, which hopefully you're not. Um, so this allows me to say, hey, this is the database.psk file and we exit out of here. Oops. And this just numbers match here. It's just a pre-shared key. You can't just put anything in there. There's some rules and there's documentation on how to set this up. And I just followed the documentation. Once again, it was extensive. It's very extensive. And once you follow through step-by-step, -step, a lot of these processes are not hard to set up. Um, other things you need to set up when you're setting up an agent, and this did cause some confusion to me, is the host name. You have to set the host name. And I was at first confused, thought it was looking for, and it's just me not reading, not doing the RTFM, host name equals Debian demo. That is the host name here, Debian demo. I, for some reason, kept thinking it was wanting the host name of the Zabbix server. Um, minor confusion. That is kind of an alignment thing you need to do. So if we call the host Debian demo here, we must also call it the same identity, unique identifier um, inside the server itself in the agent.config file. Uh, that's just an important little aspect. I don't know why, but that one kind of got me stuck um, and was a little bit confusing. The other thing that was confusing when you're applying the uh, templates is I just assumed it would add things. It didn't. So here's the host, Debian demo, and we go over here to templates. When you're adding a template, we have it adding this template. So let's add HTTP to this. So template HTTP server, update. All right, Debian demo, templates, it didn't add it. it. This is the little things about the interface. Not bad. Click the add button, Tom. Now hit update and it's fixed. 
these little quirks sometimes cause me to be a little bit confused because now it's going to monitor for HTTP. Um, it's it, knowing to actually click the add button next, not just select it and assuming it would put it up here. Uh, no, no big deal there. So when you just unlink it, update it, now it's removed. Now, this is all talk about the Zabbix agent. And if you looked, when you're looking at the options for Zabbix, you're like, but it offers SNMP. This is where Zabbix is really cool because if you have a lot of networking devices, it can SNMP monitor them. So you can put an IP address uh, for the monitoring. It's a little tricky. There's a spot you put the password in and it, there's a whole section on how to set up SNMP. There's a guide for it. Uh, but then you can have it monitoring your network infrastructure. And if you're over here looking at uh, some of the options. When you look at the amazing list, and this is what really got me, when it comes to like not just UPSs and printers and uh, things like that, it can do SNMP for just amazing list of devices that are, there's a lot of built-in SNMP templates. And then there's a whole stack of more of them that you can find inside of here. And we're talking a lot of the big brands. Uh, so, you know, Mellanox, Huawei equipment, Huawei, Huawei, I may be saying it wrong, uh, Citrix equipment, lots of Cisco devices are supported in here and a lot of other companies. So if you want to monitor some of the Cisco ASA equipment, um, all kinds of SNMP templates are set up in here or well, the other option inside of here is just generic SNMP monitoring um, and then build your own template for it. So you, they have a bunch of generic templates in here. So you can throw it in here and say, these are the things I'm looking for. And SNMP has been around a long time, but there's not every device has the same exact pieces of information, hence why there's so many different template options. And of course, you're limited to what that device is able to disclose or does choose to disclose over SNMP, but kind of cool that it can do that. And you can do both. You can have an agent interface for this a host. You can have an SNMP. It also does IPMI and JMX interfaces and has a little description right here. Now back to the proxy. If this was behind another group of servers, you could have the proxy pulling uh, behind it. Now when you're looking at the templates, and we'll click on the template itself, template OS Linux, then there is the applications that are monitored under this template, the items monitored under this template, host boot time, host name, blah, blah, blah. And triggers, things that are done. What do we do with the information that we get on there? So uh, right here we have disk IO is overloaded for this particular host name because we have this template applied. So it all does it like by a series of variables. And when the average is five minutes above greater than 20, this is where it's kind of cool because you can then edit the template and say, no, I want my threshold to be different. And then when you have a template applied to a group of servers, you only have to change it once in a tablet, change that one little trigger or the item in that trigger. And then it's, of course, then processed across the board. This is really cool. And it's also neat because uh, there's a bunch of different flexible ways you can look at this data and add a bunch of custom intervals to the way you want it scheduled or flexible timing. You can really drill down and it's not a hard thing to figure out. Once you understand what it is you're looking for, you can then tweak and customize it. And like I said, this is one of the reasons I really like Zabbix is it's very, very customizable, but gives you enough templates to get you going and get you started. And I really uh, haven't made many changes. I did make some changes to the BSD template. I'm not really sure why it thinks there's too many processes running on FreeBSD for the 11.2 FreeNAS. So I just increased the number of processes running on it. Not really sure why, it just thinks there's too many things going on with it. Maybe it's because I have some of the jails set up. I'm not sure, but that's my only problem I have with the BSD template. The Linux templates worked right out of the box and I haven't had to change them. And they seem to notify me if there's any real problems or anything going on with the servers. And it's this is what it looks like when there's a problem. I uh, applied the template, but we deleted the template, but still there was a problem while the template was applied. It said the HTTP server's down. Well, and the reason it's down that doesn't exist on the server. So also if you misalign a template, you say, hey, monitor the service and it can't find that service. It's going to give an error on there. And you can control, There's you can drill down how frequently the agents contact, how frequently the agents pull data. That's all very customizable as well. Um, and the same thing, even the interface itself, I've switched to the dark interface. It by default, had a light interface, so you can do that. Now, 
Besides all these configuration, event correlation, which you can create your own correlation information, uh, which is interesting. I haven't really uh, dug deep into this, but it will allow you to create a correlation between certain things. If the conditions equal this between these event tags and these event tags. So basically, if this server becomes loaded, then this server becomes loaded, then this happens and this happens, do this. And that's where... Like, it's kind of mind-blowing just how extensive it is that you can do all that, but it's one of those things I've really liked as I've dug into Zavix. Um, now, as far as notifying you, I thought it was weird, but it's under media types, and I don't have this set up. So you can do uh, SMS, provided you have something to send SMS information out. But that's actually kind of neat because it actually is going to uh, dev uh, TTY S0. So you could actually set it up to SMS via some type of 4G device because, you know, maybe you want the Zavix server to send you a notice when it can't get out to the internet and you have some type of 4G device attached to it. So I thought that was kind of neat. It's got Jabber in here. I think there's a way you can uh, integrate into Slack. And, but my, I'm probably just going to have it uh, managed via email so I can then just do this username and password and i'll put my email information in here and have me go ahead and do it it does have some type of commercial easy texting module uh you can also say kick off a script and that's another type you can do i think it's weird they're all called media types but you can say run this script if this is a trigger to notify however so it goes back to that extensive amounts of customization and then you can have these scripts now those scripts are, uh, once again, a couple built-in defaults, detect operating system, ping, and that. Uh, with this, for example, detect operating system will uh, kick off Nmap and then uh, have Zavix talk to uh, the server via Nmap and do an OS detection. I thought it was a weird way to do it, but that's what comes built in. Uh, you can also trace route or ping to a server, and actually those show up here. We'll go to the dashboard. Let's go to ping. and gives me the ping results from the Zavix server to this server here. Pretty straightforward. Um, and you, of course, as you add more scripts, you get more options there. So maybe you have some common thing you wanna do and you can integrate this with you know, Ansible or some other scripting uh, and configuration management tool to really have this take care of things for you all from one dashboard. Like I said, my, I, my overall feelings of using Zavix for a few weeks, maybe close to a month now, I really like it. I really enjoy it. I've uh, went and had several updates to it. There's actually been a, a minor release update to Zavix since I first started using it, and everything's gone really smooth. Uh, the updates, once I got this installed and I used their PPA and followed all their instructions, it's worked great. It's worked wonderful with PFSense being able to uh, get data out of here. It's also nice because we're probably going to set up to talk to a few more uh, PFSenses for clients because it just seems to be an even better way than SNMP to monitor uh, some of the statuses or having PFSense that us notices. We can just gather up all the data from things like PFSense or several other firewalls if, it's, if we want to monitor it via SNMP or however we want to tie it to our network. Definitely has that as an option. I'm not doing as much with the SNMP because I like the agents better and I don't really have a need to monitor the devices, but you can you know, set this up to monitor printers and things like that. Anything that has the SNMP support on there and then you create your events and triggers from that. Uh, but as Abix, it, my overall though, if you want to get into it, you're going to have to spend some time doing some reading. It's not a turnkey just uh, drop it in your system and it works, but I find it really worthwhile and uh, it's been really handy in troubleshooting a couple little problems that we were having with one of our proxies for our remote access server, uh, being able to correlate why things were happening and, and log them all as to an event map to try to uh, figure something. Because when you have a problem that doesn't occur, but once a day, you try to figure out what those event correlations are that's occurring at those days. And you can look at the load, you can look at the traffic and put it all together. It's been very helpful for all that. So definitely give Zappos a try if you're interested in it. And uh, with the way they have their, you know, you can just download and get running with it for their uh, downloads here. Uh, not a reason not to try. I load up a virtual machine of it and, you know, uh, play around. Documentation's wonderful. It's extensive. There's just a lot of it, uh, a lot to go through because it's a lot to learn, but I think it's a worthwhile system for sure. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more content from my channel, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell icon and hopefully YouTube will send you a notice. If you're interested in contracting Lawrence Systems for any type of IT services work or consulting work, go ahead and head over to lawrencesystems.com and fill out our contact and get in touch with us. 
If you would like to help the channel out in other ways, you can use our affiliate links below in the description, or we have a link directly to our Lawrence Systems page where we have a list of different affiliate offers, and it's very appreciated if you use any of those for signing up any of the services, and many of them offer you discounts. If you want to head over to our forums, there'll be a link in the description for our forums, uh, wherever they may be, because we've been looking at different forum platforms, but they'll always be relevantly linked right there. All right, once again, thanks. Leave some feedback and comments below on this video. If if you loved it, if you hated it, I try to reply to everyone, the people who hate and the people who love them. So thank you very much and see you next time.